why don't men approach you anymore is it because we're too shy or too nervous or even worse is it because you've been doing something that you didn't even realize was pushing us away the answer is actually quite complicated and shocking. So we're gonna discuss seven reasons which include app anxiety, the old days, the skill gap, female masculinity, the fear of rejection, microwave men, and even corn addiction as to why men never approach you anymore from a man's perspective, of course, and how you can actually reverse that so that the men are coming up to you left and right and begging for your number. We'll get started with app anxiety. Now that we have social media apps, now that the guys are used to being able to contact you all over social media, being able to DM you, being able to uh, talk to you on dating apps, we're going to get to dating apps, of course. They now are so used to being able to communicate and reach out to you and get access to you through those apps. It creates a subconscious anxiety of the actual real in-person meeting as weird as it sounds. And so for a lot of us that have grown up with technology, grown up with social media apps, and now we're very used to dating apps and Tinder and Instagram and all that good stuff and our ability to be able to contact and reach out to people through that, we have subconsciously become more comfortable in that, more comfortable approaching people through social media, through texting through Snapchat. And because we become so comfortable approaching people through that avenue instead of in person, it gives us that much more anxiety when we actually think about, oh, I was texting you and it was cool. We were Snapchatting and it was cool because I could just sit on my couch and not really have to think about having real conversation with you. But now that I actually have to meet you in real life, this is nerve wracking. I don't know if I can do this. What am I going to say? What am I going to ask? What am I going to, what are we going to talk about? What, what, what is our, what is our relationship going to look like? Are we going to be interesting to each other? Are we going to be funny? Are we, is it going to be awkward? Right. And a lot of us have spent a lot of time and we'll talk about the skill gap in a little bit, of course, but a lot of us are spent a lot of our time now building up our skills on our apps, on our dating apps, on our, uh, on texting, on Snapchat, we sp we've built our skills, especially as men in being able to communicate on these apps that now when we actually have to go out into the real world, we have so much anxiety of actually having to be with someone in real life and have a real discussion with them. And so you're probably wondering, okay, so the app anxiety, how is that playing a role in guys not wanting to approach me? Well, because of that app anxiety, that anxiety that they get from the fact that they're so used to only talking to women over the phone that they, they haven't really practiced the skill set to be able to approach them in person. Well, now that you're in person, whether it be because he's never seen you on a dating app, this is the first and only time he'll see you or you know, he's just at an event, whatever it may be. Now that he's finally seeing you in real life and it requires the skill set of being able to strike conversation in real life, a lot of these guys, and I, I'm not saying that because I'm better than them, I'm saying that because I'm one of them. A lot of these guys find it difficult to actually muster up the courage to go up to you and speak to you because they're so accustomed to only having to meet and speak to women over the phone. This is why I always tell you guys that your main focus shouldn't be about meeting the best texter or the best Snapchatter, because I know for a lot of you that put a lot of onus on the idea that, hey, I want someone who's going to communicate with me all the time. I want someone who's going to talk to me 24 seven. I want someone who's going to text me back in 35 seconds because that's going to keep me interested. That's going to make me feel uh, validated. That's going to make me feel like he's giving me attention. In reality, the guys who are giving you all this great attention over text, they're texting you back in 30 seconds one of two things are happening. Usually what's happening is that he's texting you and he's such a great texter because he's not very good in person. And then what secondly is happening also is that the reason he would even have enough time to be texting you all throughout the day is probably because he doesn't have much going on for himself. If either of those two possibilities are not good. Number two, we have the old days. Let's say you went to a diner and you went to a diner with your friends and you were from out of town. 
So you came to this diner from out of town. You sat down at this diner with your friends and you guys are enjoying some milkshakes, some fries, some burgers. It's like a hangout spot. When you sit down at the diner, you can see across the diner a guy and his group of friends looking at you. And you see one guy in particular who's eyeing you down at this diner. And so you think to yourself, what's with you? Well, what's what's your what's his problem? And you're kind of whispering to your friends and you see him. He's whispering to his friends. You see him. He's talking to his friends. You're like, is he talking about me? Is he? And so you enjoy your milkshake and your fries with the rest of your friends and you guys have a good time. And so you're leaving the diner after you guys enjoy yourselves. And right as you're about to walk out of the diner, you feel the grab of your hand of your wrist from behind you. And you look behind you and it's the guy who was sitting across from you and staring at you this entire time at this diner. And so he kind of is like, you must not be from here because I've never seen you around in this diner before. And you go to him and you're like, no, yeah, I'm from out of town. Yeah, my name's Daisy. Um, nice to meet you. And he's like, well, real nice to meet you. Um, I don't know if I'd ever see you again. So I just thought, you know, I had to come up here and ask, you know, if you if I could have your number and maybe we could go out sometime. And so you give him your real number and then you go home and you're thinking maybe he forgot about it. Maybe he doesn't remember. And later that night, you hear the ring of your landline because remember this back in the day of your landline and you go and you pick up your landline and you hear him on the phone say, hey, hey, Daisy, how's it going? You know, I, I really enjoyed seeing you today at the diner. I was hoping maybe we could set up going out on a date, you know, this Thursday. Is that possible? Like in the next couple of days, I could come pick you up at eight o'clock. And you're like, sure, you come pick me up at eight o'clock. And so Thursday come, he pulls up. He pulls up on you on Thursday night and he picks you up right at eight o'clock and he takes you to a really nice restaurant. And by the time you and him are sitting at that table at that restaurant, he had to go through multiple different steps to get here to this point where he can have you sitting in front of him at this restaurant. He had to see you in the diner. He had to acknowledge that he thinks you're beautiful. In that same moment, he only had 30, 40 minutes to decide, okay, I know I want to talk to this girl. I know I need to get her number on the spot because I'm never going to see her again if she leaves this diner. So now I have to come up with something interesting and witty, be funny, be charismatic, go up to her, make a joke, not be awkward and talk to her in a way where I can convince her to give out her number to me that I can call her and set up a date because I really, really want this girl. And so even when he did that, he still had to go home, call you, hope that you answer, set up this time with you, all that good stuff. And then by the time you guys finally get on this date, he had to put in so much work into trying to present himself the best way that he can get you out on this date that you guys are having a good time and enjoying each other's company. And I say all that to say, you have to understand how a guy is going to value you because of how much effort was put into just getting you here in front of him. And so you're probably thinking, okay, how does that example relate to why men never approach me now? Well, when you think about the amount of effort I just gave in that example as to how much work it took just to get you out on this date, sitting at this dinner table right in front of him. And then you think to yourself, okay, well, nowadays, how much effort would it take for a guy to get you out on a date? When you think about the idea, it's really nothing like I just described in the old days. It's a lot more like he swipes left and right on 300 women. And then after 325 women, he sees your picture. He looks at your picture for maybe 40, 45 seconds. He scrolls through four or five pictures. Maybe he reads a bio. He probably skims the bio. And then he makes a decision on, ah, uh, you know, she's just above mid enough for me to want to actually take my finger and swipe right on her. And when he swipes right on you, he realizes he matches you. He messages you a couple of messages because he already knows you're interested in him. He says, hey, you want to go out on a date? Sure, we go out on a date. He comes to that date. And by the time he gets on that date with you, 
before you show up on the date he's probably swiping on 300 300 other women and you guys have the date he kind of you know is here there thinking about all the other messages he has going on all the other people he has to talk to he probably doesn't even remember everything you guys talked or messaged about because he's been messaging you along with 25 other women and then in the process of him uh, uh having this date with you as soon as you leave this date he's swiping left and right on three hundred other women i say that to say the mindset that men bring to the table is a function of how many options are at their disposal and before if you met a, a pretty girl there was a good chance you would never see that girl ever again in your life and that part that realization motivated men to actually get up out of their chair to see a woman that they like and actually go up to her and approach her, start flirting, try to be interesting because the understanding was, hey, I'm not just going to see another beautiful woman in the next 30 minutes. Hey, I'm not just going to see another beautiful woman in, you know, by swiping left or right. I actually have to pursue the women I see and I find attractive or I think are, are, is interesting and I have to go after them. Now, obviously, in the old days, men still cheated. So let's not be hyperbolic and pretend like the old days, all the men were amazing. And nowadays, the, the men suck, OK, because they suck then they suck now. OK, so you're probably thinking, well, what can I do about that? Those were the old days. How can I inspire men to chase after me or inspire men to approach me? when i live in present day i don't live in the old days i can't reverse social media i can't reverse dating apps well i'll tell you this when you make yourself unavailable to men on in those places where they're trying to access women easily you've just made it that much harder for men to ever see or hear from you if it's not in person or if they don't have the courage to approach you and approach you properly You've also made your life a lot easier because you spend a lot less time around the men who are not willing to approach you the right way or approach you even in general. I'll give you an example, right? Because if you're on Hinge, Bumble, Tinder, you're, you know, uh, DMing tons of guys, right? Everyone has access to you if they need it. They can just swipe left and right on you. You're, you're a textaholic. You're Snapchatting everyone. What happens is a lot of the men in your life, whether you want to call the guys you're talking to, the guys you're casually just seeing, spending time with, whatever going on dates with, a lot of the guys that have access to you are having access to you without having to do too much work, without ever having to be like, hey, let's go out on a date. Hey, I want to call you. Hey, I want to spend some time with you. Hey, I want to take you this place, right? Because you're available to them in these low quality places. And so why would they? They already have access to you. But when you cut that access from the men, right? When you don't allow men to access you in low quality formats, now all of a sudden the only men that can access you are the men who have the courage and confidence to approach you in person. Are you following me so far? And I know this is the part that would be scary for most of you. If I'm not available on the dating app, if I'm not available online, if I'm, by the way, when I say available online, I'm not saying delete your Instagram, right? I just mean in general, right? If I'm not available on dating that, if I'm not available to text, if I'm not available to Snapchat, how are the men going to read, find me? How are they even going to know of my existence? This is great. That's a great question. What I say to that is you, you then need to step out of your house because when you step out of your house, you give yourself the opportunity to meet the men who are willing to approach you in person because now you kind of have put you've put yourself in a situation where it resembles the old days where the only men who can even access you are the men who are courageous enough to approach you when they see you outside of your house and those are the only men that are ever in your life that you ever spend any time talking to or conversating with because no other man has access to you in any other way shape or form if you want to know where should i spend my time where should i go out where should i be where should i hang out that people that men will approach me and the men who are actually motivated to approach me will approach me just go spend some time doing something outside of your house that you enjoy doing because you'll get two birds with one stone because when you're out doing something that you already enjoy doing you won't be sitting there angry like hmm, i'm i'm only here to get men to talk to me if men aren't here to talk to me this is a complete waste of my time uh, where are the men where are the men where are the men because you want to allow yourself the patience right and 
the calmness that you can be doing something you enjoy and in the process of doing something you enjoy that people will come up to you people will talk to you people will strike conversations with you number three we have skill gap barrier of entry like we mentioned with dating apps before has lowered quite a bit why because the skill gap is very different than it used to be. When I say skill gap, I'm referring to the skill set you would need to have. Think of think of relationships and love like a game. It kind of is a game, but let's think of it as a game. So when I say it's a game, I mean you have a skill set. The more skill set I have with in charisma as a guy, I'm funny, I'm interesting, I'm attractive, I'm good looking, I have money, I'm tall. I have nice teeth, a good hygiene, all that good stuff is going to make it easier for me to stack up, let's call it points. And when, when I say points, I just mean my ability to attract more and more women. If I can attract more and more women, well, I have more and more options. I can have a better partner. Everything is good. So it's like a game. Before, in the old days, like we just talked about, the skill gap was different. You had to possess a different skill set if you wanted access to more and more women. Of course, you needed money. Of course, you had to be attractive. Of course, you had to be charismatic if you wanted to attract women in the old days. And there was an emphasis put on your charisma, your energy, your ability to be charming and interesting, have good chat, right? be persuasive, all of those things. You almost had to be like a car salesman because all of those things were so important and vital to your ability to be able to be interesting or get women to like you in the old days. There was no way for you to be interesting or get a woman to like you or get on a date with you if you couldn't strike good conversation, if you couldn't uh, make her laugh at your jokes, if you couldn't flatter her or make her feel good about herself or just be uh, hold a conversation. There was no way for you to get access to women if you didn't possess those skill sets. And so it forced the men to put themselves in a position where their only option was learn how to get the skill set so they can utilize it and get access to more women or no women for you you sit at home you be a soy boy and watch all the other watch all the women go to all the men that you despise okay those were the only two options now the skill gap comes in because now that we have things like dating apps now that we have all these snapchat all these other low quality ways that the men can access you the skill gap has de decreased because the men no longer need charisma to approach you. They no longer need to be interesting or funny or or uh, outgoing, right? Or hold conversation in order to approach you. You know why? Because they don't have to approach you. <laughs> they just have to text you. They just have to swipe right on you. They just have to swipe left on you. So why would they even bother possessing the skills required to get women in person when they can get women over the phone? This is why I always tell you guys the best solution to a lot of your problems, especially this problem as it relates to why the men don't approach you and why you constantly find yourselves like is in this world, do men not take initiative? You have to remove men's access to you in these low quality forms because all of the men with that very low skill set right who can't chat who can't be interesting who can't be funny who can't be charismatic who can't hold the conversation where do you think all of them are gonna flock to they're gonna flock to the dating app where they don't have to do any of that stuff those men who used to have to sit on the sidelines and watch all the charismatic interesting funny men get all the girls can actually build their skill set up in being the most interesting texter best snapchatter best tinder dater and talk to you over the phone and then you end up on a date with a guy who's uninteresting boring and just overall not the type of man that you want. However, there are men who aren't living in that environment where they're only meeting girls at clubs or only meeting them on dating apps or only meeting them at bars. Why? Probably because they have much better things to do with their time. And those are the men you are seeking because those men will be willing to approach you if they really like you. Building up your own individual desire that the men will desire you enough to approach you is a whole different story. But as it relates to the men and why the men are not approaching women as much, that's one of the reasons is the skill gap has lowered. Number four, we have female masculinity. We have to touch on it 
in many different aspects. And I don't want you to become offended by what we're going to talk about. I don't know if you've ever heard of Hot Girl Summer. If you don't know what a hot girl is, and you probably never heard of Hot Girl Summer. Hot Girl Summer and a hot girl is the idea. I don't mean hot like on fire. And I also don't mean hot like, you know, someone who's really attractive. I mean a hot girl as in the mindset. The mindset of a hot girl, and this is like a real thing. You can go search up hot girl summer after we have this conversation if you're not sure. The idea and the mindset of the hot girl summer, the hot girl mindset is that I will go out into the world and I will sleep with whoever I want, however many times I want, do and act and say, speak whatever I want and shake my booty on a yacht whenever and however I want. There will be no man to tell me anything. There will be nobody that I'm tied down to. I go around and I do exactly what I want, exactly however I want for as long as I want. And nobody can tell me anything. That is the essence of a hot girl. Now, obviously they have the same thing for hot boys as well. I think this is my own personal perspective. I think it stems from the idea that men or sorry, women and men are the same. And they should be able to do the same things. So because the men, obviously, for the longest periods of time, they go out, they sleep with women, they do whatever they want, they act however they want. The women have adopted the mindset, obviously not all women, but the culture has shifted where a lot of women are adopting the mindset. And I'm not here to say whether it's a good or bad thing. I'm just saying what it is, have adopted the mindset that, hey, the men do this. They act like this. They sleep with who they want. They go out, they have fun and they don't get punished for it. I'm going to do the same thing as the men do. I'm going to be like the men. So that's great in theory. But what ends up happening is that the women begin to embody a lot of the character traits and energy of a man. So the masculine, okay? I'm just referring to straight heterosexual relationships, right? And we obviously know in a straight heterosexual relationship that men are supposed to, of course, we all have a little bit of both, but men for the most part are supposed to embody the masculine and women for the most part are supposed to embody the feminine. The problem is when women become obsessed with the idea that I want to do what the men do because it's unfair that the men get to do this and I don't get to do that. There becomes a obsession with actually being more like men. In turn, meaning you become more masculine in your energy. And I know for some of you guys who are not used to people talking about energy and spirituality, we get deep on here. So we talk about energy, spirituality, all that good stuff. And it matters because your mindset shift to I want to do like the men do actually turns your energy and it shifts into being more masculine. And so you approach your relationships more masculine. The energy you project outwardly is more masculine. And so what are the men receiving from you? Masculine energy. And so what do you, how do you think they treat you? They treat you as a masculine energy. And what do you think you attract in men? You attract men who are in their feminine energy. Do you see how that works? Because feminine and masculine, I'm only speaking on heterosexual relationships, feminine and masculine are like yin and yang. And remember, I just told you, we don't all have 100% of one and 0% of the other. It's a fluid concept that can be 50, 60%, 40%, right? But it has to flow in the right order to be whole, right? It has to equal up to 100%. So my point being is that if you are a woman who is in more of your masculine, I'm not here to tell you whether that's right or wrong. You can do what you want with your life. But if you are a woman who is embodying more of your masculine energy, you're naturally going to attract men who are in more of their feminine energy. And the reason I bring up female masculinity and I bring up hot girls is because the movement of hot girl, summer, hot girl mindset, which is the culture of the music that you listen to. I don't want to get too deep on here because we've talked about music in the past and the way the music affects. Actually, you know what? We will get a little bit deep, right? The music that you're listening to is affecting your mind state and what you think you should be embodying when you go out. And I don't know if it let me know in the chat if you've noticed how the shift in music has become hyper actualized and focused on how women should go out and do whatever they want, act like the men. And you don't realize it when you're listening to it because it feels innocent, but it is actually brainwashing you 
and shifting your frame of mind to convince you I've got to be more like this because you listen to it in your music, you watch it in the music video, right? Which the music video is embodying the same thing as the music, right? You see it on TV when you're watching your TV shows. You see it on in the movie theaters when you're watching your movies and it's part of the culture shift, right? The things that you're absorbing into your mind is shifting your your concept of reality and is also shifting uh, your own view of yourself, as crazy as it sounds. And so I say that, say, when you're unaware of the subconscious shift that is happening in your mind based on what you're absorbing, your mind, especially in today's day and age, can easily shift into embodying much more of the masculine energy that you want to do and act like the guys act because the guys get to walk around and do whatever they want, treat women however they want, do whatever they want. And so your first mindset is, uh, is I'm going to do how the men do. I'm going to play the men how the men play me. I'm going to be masculine like the men and sleep with who I want, do whatever I want. Nobody's going to be able to tell me nothing. And like I say, I'm not here to tell you what's what's right and wrong, but I am here to share with you when you're wondering why the men don't approach you. Also think to yourself, am I embodying masculine qualities that will attract a more feminine man? OK, this is how it ties together, because it's not about being right or wrong in embodying your masculine or embodying your feminine. But if you're trying to attract a masculine man, you also have to be living your life in your feminine energy. Now, I know that's difficult because it's not easy to do that all the time and you have to protect yourself and you have to be on guard and all that good stuff. But I want you to understand if you're too deep into your masculine energy, you're naturally going to attract a man who is a lot deeper into his feminine energy. That's the yin and the yang right there. And so if you're attracting a lot of men who are deep into their feminine energy, they're not going to be approaching you. Because that's not what feminine energy does. Feminine energy is receiving. And so the men who are naturally in their feminine energy are going to be sitting back expecting you to chase them, are going to be sitting back expecting princess treatment from them. And I can't, I'm a man, so obviously I can't tell you what it means to be a woman. I can't tell you what it means to be uh, in your feminine energy. I really can't. But I say that to ask you a question that might make you think and ponder on, hey, have I been embodying more of my masculine energy or am I doing things that are more in line with the masculine than they are the feminine and actually get your wheel spinning on how you can better embody your feminine energy that you can be receiving from these men as opposed to being on edge and being the one chasing after these men or trying to attract the trying to get these men to like you trying to be get these men to see you and get these men to validate you and you're like on the hunt number five we have the fear of rejection i'm telling you this from a man's perspective we have become accustomed to being able to swipe left, swipe right on all the different women that we want access to or that we could ever dream of or meet. We have stopped living in reality, quote unquote. When I say stop living in reality, what I really mean is there is a natural flow of going out, meeting people, liking some people, being interested in some people, and then realizing that some of those people that you meet that you're interested in might not be interested in you back or interested in you at the same level in which you're interested in them. Even in some scenarios, you might go out, you might show your interest in someone and they reject you. Now, very important as men, I'll tell you this from a man's perspective, as men, that builds character. That rejection even from just women that don't like you or don't think you're attractive or don't want you, that builds character. Why? Because it forces us to increase our skill set or figure out our points of weakness that need to improve in order for us to see the result that we want to see. Now, I'll break that down even further. If I were to go out as a guy, and let's say I'm like, hey, guys, let's say I'm 18 with my boys and I'm like, hey, guys, yo, let's go out to the mall. Let's go pick up some girls numbers. I want to meet some new girls. And we go out to the mall. 
me and my boys and we're talking to girls and I'm talking to some girls and they're like, ew, get away from me. Or every time that I talk to a girl, I'm so awkward or, or like weird about it in my approach that they're just kind of like, nah, I have a boyfriend. Nah, I'm not going to give my number. Meanwhile, I have a best friend who's going out and he's like chatting with the girls. He's making them laugh. He's being interesting. He's being funny and he's getting every girl's number. What does that tell me? My rejection is a function of my lack of skill set or my weaknesses in particular areas, whether that be my looks, maybe I'm not dressing nice, maybe I'm not as attractive, maybe I, I'm not as charismatic, I'm not interesting, I'm not funny. So what does it force me to do? I want access to those women as a man, but I'm being rejected by those women constantly. That rejection is pain, but that rejection is also motivation to try and actually get the women that I want access to. You'll be shocked how many men get rich just to get back at an ex or in the back of their mind, be able to say to themselves, oh, I know that girl's regretting, you know, rejecting me now, or I know that girl's regretting not wanting me now that I'm rich and I'm up and I'm, and I'm super attractive and I've glowed up and my life's different. And, and now she's still dealing with bums, right? That's motivation. That pain becomes motivation. But what happens is now that a lot of the men, including me, I'm a man. Now that we all get to spend all of our time on the dating apps or on social media, we don't have to face rejection as we once would have, where we're actually going up to girls, showing our interest in them, and then having them reject us because they're not as interested in them, in us, or we're not on the same level as other guys. And because we don't have to face that same level of rejection, there's no longer that same amount of pain associated with the rejection. Why? Because think about it. If I'm on the dating app and a girl doesn't like me, she simply swipes left on me. But from my end, I don't see her rejecting me. I don't even notice her. She doesn't even cross my ecosystem. I swipe on a bunch of girls and whoever I find interesting that finds me interesting. Those are the only people I even end up having a conversation with. I don't even have to go through the pain of having a conversation with any woman or girl or anybody who is not interested in me already. And so I don't have to face that rejection or that reality, that splash of cold water that, hey, I need to increase my charisma. I need to be more funny. I need to be more approachable. I need to be able to hold better conversation. I never have to get to that point because I don't need to. And what also happens is I don't build up a tolerance for rejection. I actually build the opposite. I build a fear of rejection where my life has been spent so much in a place that is comfortable where I never have to actually face rejection because I just swipe left and swipe right. And the only girls I talk to are the girls who swiped right on me. I have a fear, right? It grows my anxiety that, oh my God, I don't want to actually go out into the real world and talk to real women and go up to them and like actually face the idea that they might not talk to me or they might not be interested in me and they might reject me. So when I see a woman out in public, when I see you out in public and you're sitting, you're looking pretty at your dinner table or wherever you are, I'm too scared to come up to you because I'm so used to being able to just swipe left and right and only talk to the girls that are interested in me. I'm like shivering at the idea that I might go up to you and have a conversation with you and you'll reject me. And remember, I talked to you guys about that app anxiety when you're an app addict, when you're a textaholic as a man, what ends up happening is you become used to that way of meeting women. You become used to that way of approaching women, even though you're not actually approaching them. In the places where the men with all the anxiety and scared of rejection would be spending their time are going to be spending their time in places where they don't actually have to face rejection. So don't put yourself in that position where you're surrounded by all the men who are too scared of rejection because then you'll be frustrated why none of the men are even willing to put themselves out on the line and face the possibility of rejection from you and come up to you or approach you. None of them are going to do that. They're all going to sit at home and be on their dating apps. Same thing at the club or the bar. None of those men are really looking for anything that requires a lot of work. So why would they be approaching women? My advice to you would be to go somewhere you enjoy spending time. Now, for some of you, you'll be like, I don't know where I enjoy spending time. Aha. We found the root of your problem. You don't know what brings you any sort of happiness or enjoyment 
or fulfillment that you don't even know where you should go to spend some time. And so instead of actively looking for what brings me fulfillment or enjoyment that I can go spend some time doing, you're instead of figuring that out, you're just going right to the dating apps, right to the clubs, right to the bars, thinking, hey, I'll just meet someone who's already ready to meet someone at one of those places. But in reality, you're only meeting someone who is looking for the most painless, quick and easy path to your squirtle. Number six, we have microwave men. Microwave men are men who want the quickest, easiest, and painless path to Squirtle. If you don't know what Squirtle is, use your brain. You should be able to come up with an idea of what you think Squirtle is. If you don't know what Squirtle is, then your Squirtle's probably not Squirtling. It's probably dry. Now, microwave men have always existed in uh, life, even before we had dating apps, okay? It's not just dating apps or social media that created microwave men. Microwave men have always existed because there will always be large groups of men who are only looking to deal with you in the quickest and easiest, most painless process possible, meaning they do not want to put in any effort, consistency or effort, whether it be approaching you, talking to you, uh, having a conversation with you, being it's going on a date with you, taking you out on a date. Paying, they don't want to do any of that stuff required in order to get access to you because they're microwave men the same way when you want food heated up and ready to go as quick and easy as possible you throw it in the microwave because you just press a button and you don't even have to think about it is the same way these men are looking to just put you in the microwave press a button then then use you and then you're done okay they want that quick, easy, painless path. They're not trying to do a whole bunch of meal prep. They're not trying to do a whole bunch of grocery shopping. They're not trying to put a bunch of meals together, salt the food. See, they just want to put you in the microwave, get access to your squirt all done. Because we're discussing why men never approach you, but you don't realize you're being surrounded by microwave men. You're surrounded. You're in a sea. You're in shark infested waters of microwave men literally swimming around you. You're on a raft in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean swimming, and it's all microwave men around you. Why? Because you're heavy on the dating apps. Why? Because you're always in the club. You're always in the bar. Why? Because you're always in the places where the low quality men are hanging out. You're in the place. Men do approach women. Trust me. Trust, 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 trust you me. Trust you me. Men do approach women. But if you spend all your time around microwave men, you will be confused and upset because your belief will be that men do not approach women. They do. But you need to actively make sure you spend your time in the places where the men are approaching women. I'm putting emphasis on specific words so that you can absorb what I'm saying, okay? They didn't come on the dating app to build a long-term serious relationship that takes a lot of effort and work and, you know, they want to have a magical romantic story. If they wanted to have a magical romantic story like The Notebook, those men would have left their house, not got on a dating app and started swiping left to right. Think about the logic. The men do not get on the dating app to make their life harder. They get on the dating app or go to the club or go to the bar to make their life easier. They want access to Squirtle. They want access to women. They want to do that easier, not harder, which is why they use the avenue of the dating app. They use the avenue of the club. They use the avenue of the bar. Because if I'm on the dating app, I already know that the only girls I'm going to even talk to are the girls who swiped right on me. And I know it's going to be easy because they're probably desperate to be in a relationship. So easier for me. If I go to the club or the bar, there's alcohol involved. And I know those girls are probably not coming to the club or the bar. They're coming there because they're probably single and they're looking for other people as well. On top of that, they're drunk. You know, they're out of their mind. They're probably doing some drugs, doing this. They're ready to have fun. And so what happens now? It's easier for me to get what I want from those women. So I'll spend all my time in the places where my life is made easier. Okay. And that's why microwave men can be so dangerous and so detrimental to your health because you'll feel like you're losing your mind and you'll also feel like you're not worth anything and you're super unattractive. 
because the men aren't approaching you, but the men aren't approaching you because there are a whole bunch of microwave men that you're surrounding yourself around and you're spending all your time with the microwave men. You can't literally stand in the path of least resistance and wonder why everyone that comes across you is actively seeking for the path of least resistance. You're in the way of that. And number seven, we have corn. We'll say C-O-R-N, but you know what I'm referring to. I'll just say pineapple movies so that the algorithm's not confused and doesn't think I'm saying something that I'm not saying, okay? You're probably thinking, okay, what do pineapple movies, how, do that, how does that even affect men's desire to approach me? Well, this is actually a really interesting concept. This is, this is the, probably the most complex com concept out of all of the seven. And this is, this is really gonna put you in the mind frame of a man. This is why this is great. It's great that we have this type of conversation. As a man, you have to understand there is an energetical, energetical is not even a word. There is an energetic power to retaining your seed. Okay. I know some of you guys might, I might lose some of you, but try and stay with me. There is an energetic power to retaining your seed. What I mean by that is when you retain your seed, you are, after a while, you begin to be able to think more clearly. Why? Because your focus is no longer on releasing your seed all the time. Your focus, after a while, becomes on whatever it is you're actively trying to pursue. That doesn't mean you don't think about pineapples. That doesn't mean you don't get aroused. But your mind frame and mind state begins shifting on what it is, on putting that, that pineapple energy into your pursuits as opposed to putting that pineapple energy into <gasps> whacking and wanking and all that good stuff. Now, I say that to say, this is going to be a really weird concept. Maybe some of you might not understand this. The pineapple movie addiction, right? Or just the, the consumption of, of consistent pineapple movies and releasing yourself to those pineapple movies as a man. What happens is something really weird and intriguing. After you release yourself to those pineapple movies on a regular basis, you actually end up losing the desire to get pineapples in real life. I'm, it's, it sounds weird. You would think, oh, but he's doing it, so he probably really enjoys pineapples and he's probably seeking it out more. But it's weird. The, uh, the idea and the concept of releasing yourself to the pineapple movies over and over again, it makes you desire the real thing less. That's why it's an addiction, not even in a good way. Like it's an addiction to just the pineapple movies. It's not an addiction to the real thing. And in, in the weirdest way, it actually makes it harder for you to want the real thing and chase after the real thing. Because that, remember I told you guys, the, re the retention of your seed is energetical power. I'm teaching you this like as a man, like this is, this is actually how, what the men feel. The retention of your seed is actually energetical power. So as you continue to release it to the pineapple movies as a man, you actively lose that ability and that desire, that hunger, that is natural instinct inside you to pursue women because as you release yourself to the pineapple movies you then go to yourself oh well i've released myself to the pineapple movie so i don't i don't have the desire to approach women in real life because that's a lot of work i've got to talk to her i've been i have to be interesting i have to be charismatic i have to be funny i have to have a good chat all of that is a process just leading up to me releasing myself you know, in the process of us having pineapples together, when I really could just watch me a couple of pineapple movies. And after I watch me a couple of pineapple movies, I'll release myself and I'll feel good anyways, without having to put in all of that effort. And so as the men get accustomed to releasing themselves to pineapple movies, instead of putting towards effort into having to really approach women, they become so used to that and not having to approach women that they no longer have the hunger or desire to approach women because there is a there is an erotic version of the desire and there is a non-erotic version of the desire. What I mean by that is part of our natural instinct as men is to desire women because we desire pineapples you know, on a subconscious level. That subconscious thinking and feeling is actually part of the motivation internally that 
pushes us to say, I find that woman attractive. I think she looks good. I find her someone that I want to get to know. So I'm going to get up out of my chair, go and speak to her, even though there's a possibility I might be rejected, even though there's a possibility she might laugh at me, even though there's a possibility this might not work out in my favor, my internal motivation is driving me to go and approach her anyways. And that internal motivation is really being fed by my desire for pineapples in real life with real women. But if my desire for pineapples in real life with real women has been suppressed by me releasing myself to a whole bunch of pineapple movies, well, now I no longer have that internal motivation to go out and meet and approach women in real life. And so that's where you come in because now you're frustrated because you're like, damn, none of these men ever want to approach me. None of these men ever want to come up to me or have a conversation or take initiative. Why? They're all releasing themselves to the pineapple movies.